My name is Dave Hollenbach, the host of From Embers to Excellence, a podcast that explores the many facets of leadership from the perspectives of some amazing people. We discuss the triumphs and failures that have shaped our lives and our leadership philosophies. I've found that it isn't whether we fail that defines us, but when we do fail, how we respond. Leaders dust off the ashes and use their failures as fuel to work harder and as lessons to come back wiser and stronger, more resilient, more determined, and more committed to excellence. Today, I'm speaking with Elena Parella. She is a personal coach, has been coaching people for uh, 13 years. She helps people uh, develop what is pronounced Susintidu in the Sardinian language. Uh, Elena hails from Sardinia off the west coast of Italy. She is passionate about the evolution of humans. And what Susintidu does or is, is the ability to see things as they are. So when she works with people, she's helping them evolve, helping them see how they've grown and developed, um, whether they're the product of toxic relationships, toxic environments, really being able to, to I guess, drop the veil and be able to see uh, who they really are, who they're capable of being. So with, with that being said, I just want to make sure that I have that accurate, Elena. Is that pretty good? Yes, it is pretty good. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. And, and so were you born and raised in Sardinia? Yes, I, were, I was born and raised here. Yes. At the age of 19, I moved to the Netherlands. Oh, wow. And, and now you're back. And 13 years ago, I, I came back to Sardinia, yes. I'd like to dig in. Uh, so you were born and raised in Sardinia. What, what was life like growing up? What was uh, your family life like? Um, I'm guessing because uh, a few of the things that you help people with is those toxic relationships, uh, domestic violence, eating disorders. And you didn't just kind of happen upon these things, like you are coaching people uh, by using your own experience to help them. Is that fair to say? Yes, yes. I use uh, that. I use my own ability to, to see things for what they really are. I can identify what other people cannot see about themselves. And I help them identify the, the family's toxic emotional inheritance, which is the root cause of almost all of our problems, unhealthy habits, conflicts, and I, I help them eliminate those elements, those toxic elements. And uh, in this way, the, the cloud that covers up their own essence fades away and they can get in touch with who they really are. Before we started recording, you mentioned your father, and I, I'm guessing that your your life growing up wasn't exactly ideal. Yes, when I was a child, I wasn't aware of uh, the things that were going on uh, beneath the surface. And um, I was a pretty happy and uh, active child. Uh, things began to change when I became 12. I began to develop unhealthy habits, like unhealthy behaviors, like a, a binge eating disorder. I began to smoke. I was bullied at school. And people said that it was my fault. It was my choice. But I was really so stupid to choose to hurt myself. No, I don't think so. Because nobody's so stupid to choose to hurt himself. So when I became 19, my father died and I awoke. This means that I began to see things for what they really are. And I understood that I was a toxic product of my family. This is why I was, uh, I developed those unhealthy habits and I was going through destructive experiences. 
And I could see that I inherited many toxic tendencies of both my father and mother, toxic beliefs, um, unresolved childhood issues, their unresolved childhood issues, inner conflicts. And they fueled all that with their poor parenting. Let's call it that way. Because both my mother and father neglected me uh, emotionally. And this was very painful. It caused trauma. My mother was controlling and obsessing. She never, she never became my best friend. She was my worst enemy. <laughs> and my father was a very busy businessman with no time for family. So he completely neglected me. I was kind of invisible for him. And so I, he fueled the family's toxic emotional inheritance that they passed on to me with this behavior, making me believe that, for example, I wasn't worthy of receiving his love. Because when you don't interact with your children, when you, you don't see your children, then you are making them believe that they are not worthy of being loved. And so uh, I grew up with this baggage that forced me to go through destructive experiences and continue to develop unhealthy behavior. Because when my father died, my binge eating turned into bulimia nervosa. And I suffered from that for 16 years. And right after that, 10 and a half years domestic violence. And the, the, the narcissist, so, sociopath, uh, psychopath, and sociopath that I was in a relationship with was the, exactly the copy of my grandfather, my grandfather. And he was very similar to my father, too. So I was really repeating generational traumas. This relationship. Uh the domestic violence was that in the netherlands no it was here i was in the netherlands uh, until the end of 2008 and then i came back to sardinia because a year before i met this guy we were uh, uh, we knew each other because we grew up uh, together when we were children we had the same age and uh well we we engaged in a relationship and so I thought I would like to come back and we had a dream together, but he, uh, he, he I, I didn't know that he was, uh, that he has this, this problem, his personality, uh, what do you say in English, uh, personality disturbance. And uh, I felt that um, it was the first year that, uh, yeah, the first, year, uh, the first month that we were together, that I felt something as, as if something was riding in, in my stomach is not for you. It was a warning sign, you know, but I couldn't, I couldn't follow that sign because I still had those family toxic in emotional elements that forced me to go into that relationship. And looking back, I recognized also that I always attracted men who had those traits. So I was, but I always avoided uh, the relationship to the dwarfs. And so I left. This time I couldn't. I couldn't. And, uh, and so I spent 10 and a half years uh, with this, this man. And uh, because I was aware of what was really going on, that I had those toxic elements that were forcing me to be and stay in that relationship, I began to work at myself to eliminate them, just like I did for the eating disorders. And so day after day, I did internal work to eliminate everything that kept me attached to him. And I broke up three times, but every time I made him come back because I wasn't finished with my internal work, you know? And the, the fourth time, it was when I freed myself from the less toxic element, it was he who left me. It was amazing. And so in, in this way, I freed myself from my family's toxic emotional inheritance, break the chain of generational pains. And at the same time, I broke also the toxic dynamic with my ex-partner. The, the inner work that you did, can can you talk a little bit about that and uh, 
um, maybe how you coach somebody through that process? Yes, it's a very deep internal process. Um, it's a matter of identifying what is making you go through these kind of experiences. For example, I identified the fear for men that my mother has. She grew up in a very violent environment with a very violent father who was like my ex-partner. And so she passed on to me that fear. And uh, fortunately, I identified that and freed myself from it. How? By loving myself. I had to learn to really love myself because we think that we love ourselves, but it isn't. But real love is something else. Real love is the energy that fuels your will to help yourself and others evolve, grow. And so I activated that uh, energy inside of me and I used it to really love myself. So I began to take care of myself. I began to, uh, instead of uh, escaping things, to challenge them, like I did it in my relationship, I began to think, okay, this is what my mother did and the results weren't uh, fruitful. So if I didn't have this toxic tendency or this toxic fear, how would I behave? What is my choice, my constructive choice? And so I did it, you know? And every time was a kind of trying to to allow a balance inside of me, taking care of myself, nurturing myself, um, encouraging myself because I was never encouraged by my parents, um, thinking that I, it wasn't my destiny to be in that relationship and understanding my own choices that were different from my parents' choices. This, this is, and I allowed myself to cry. That was very, very important. Very important. Because, for example, my I never saw my father crying. That's not good. <laughs> I think my opinion is not good because my father kept everything inside. And I allowed myself to do that. And every time I felt as if I was releasing so much toxic energy that I inherited from my family, you know. And it felt good after. I felt lighter every time. So allowing yourself to cry is something that you that you can do to eliminate those toxic elements. Another thing that is very important is um, to don't be too hard on yourself. Don't think it's my fault because it's not. You are forced to go through those toxic relationships uh, to develop those behaviors so don't be hard on yourself and think okay it's not my fault what can i do to change this situation while you do work a lot with people that uh have have been dealing with the effects of domestic violence <clears throat> or they they're struggling with eating disorders that's those aren't the only people that you work with. Um, you you work with people that just really are, are struggling through life. I, I would imagine the through Sintidu, uh, you're you're helping people see things as they are. So when people are are whether they're struggling with one thing or another being able to identify the root cause of those uh, difficulties in their life. Um, so you don't necessarily just focus on people that ha are, you know, the victims of domestic okay. violence or, you know, have eating disorders. You help people from all walks of life. How would you describe uh, like the predominant client that you have? Is it mainly women, men, um, teenager, 20s, 30s? I, and I'm just trying to get a feel for who, who you like to work with most. The people that I work with 
are high achievers. Doesn't matter the gender. I help also teenagers. For example, one of my current clients is a teenager. And the most important is that they are ready to be supported by me. Because for example, if someone who is suffering from eating disorder comes to me, but she's not ready, I cannot help her. Being ready means that you, you don't suffer from psychiatric disorder, for example, because I cannot, I'm not specialized in that. It's not my field. And so I didn't have uh, any uh, psychiatric disorder, so I could help myself overcome those behaviors and, and change. And the most important is that, first of all, high achievers, people who are not afraid to um, question everything that was taught to them by family and society, because everything that we believe in and the, 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 the values, the, the beliefs that we, we grew up with determine our behavior. And so the people that come to me can speak candidly about family and society. If they are people who are not uh, afraid to challenge the status quo. This is also very important because they bring you beyond what you can imagine. And, and they are people who want to make it in life. They are people who want to give to their life uh, or that the life that is, is sometimes even bigger than themselves. And people who want to really thrive in all aspects of life because this is possible, it is possible, but you have to elevate yourself from the inside, meaning that you have to eliminate everything that is toxic and that is um, impairing your ability to see things for what they really are. And so these are people who want to become new human beings, to evolve into new human beings and become free to choose how to feel, what to think and how to behave. Can you imagine if you can do that? I achieve that. And this is freedom. This is real freedom because there is nothing outside of you that can influence how you behave, what you feel, how, to, what, how you feel, what to think. You know, it's from the inside that you choose. And there is also nothing anymore that is toxic inside of you that pushes you to, to develop unwanted behavior or to go through destructive experiences. I want to, I, I help people who are really ready to experience freedom yeah. and to think of the future because I'm doing this for the children of the future. I'd like to get a sense of maybe some of the, the deeper um, understanding, the, the deeper understanding that you've achieve just through your own personal research, your own personal training, um, how you've developed to, to get to the point where you are right now, where you're able to help people um, overcome their, their toxic past or their toxic history. So when I was reading about, reading about you, where it was talking about your your own personal research um like you've so you have really the foundation of your education in sardinia then you went away to the ne netherlands did you go to university there and yes. and and you're because what i what i hear when you're talking is really kind of a, a like a philosophical foundation and maybe even a little bit spiritual. And I'm just trying to get maybe the, the influences that really helped you become who you are now. Actually, uh, there was no internal external influence that helped me to become who I am now. I didn't absorb a knowledge from the outside, from my studies, readings, or experiences. It, it was from the inside because I, I could eliminate my family's toxic emotional inheritance and that knowledge came to the surface because you know everything that we need to know about ourselves, others and life is, is written inside of us. We have a kind of instruction manual inside. 
And it is thanks to the love of our parents that we become able to read it. Unless our parents have toxic inheritance, then, then that doesn't happen, it doesn't. Yeah? And so the more I elim eliminated uh, those toxic elements, the more I could read what I had inside. And the studies and the research and the readings that I have done uh, help me to understand uh, the limitations, actually. It, was, it were more the limitations of what I read and study that pushed me to go beyond because there were many things that weren't, didn't sound real, didn't sound possible, even though uh, there are things that are believed by the many, by the majority, I couldn't see the consistency. In theory, they said A, and in practice, it was B. So it was, and because of that, I, I, I wanted to, to go beyond. And I understood, for example, thanks to my studies, uh, I, I attended university. I did Latin American studies in literature. And then I took another master in, uh, again, in the Latin American studies in uh, uh, cultural anthropology was the orientation course because for literature and cultural anthropology you can understand yourself better and others uh, especially group dynamics and i was interested in political violence still am um, and uh, how things become like they are and i could see that often what i am what I uh, was told was not true. And sometimes I could recognize um, or understand or, or it was revealed a truth. For example, I went to Peru to, to do some field research for my uh, thesis about the political violence that uh, they went through for a decade or even more. And I interviewed the victims the indigenous victims. And at one point, um, well, I met many women and there was one of them who said something to me that made me completely change the view that I had on domestic violence and, and women being the victims only. And that woman, I am so thankful to her because she said, okay, you know, what we do complain about. We gave birth to the perpetrators of violence. And I was, it hit me. I thought, what? Because I left Europe thinking women are the victims of violence, period. You know? And she opened my eyes and I thought, oh, wow, that's big. You know, a woman saying this, you know, but she, she was right. And then I understood that, yeah, here there is something more to be discovered, to be uncovered, because it's already there. And I began to see that indeed in, in situations of domestic violence, how much both men and women, men and women contribute to, to this. I went through domestic violence and I understood that I was the one who allowed a violent man in my life. Why? Not because I really liked it, <laughs> of course not, but because I had inside something that resonated with him. And it was, first of all, a pain, a trauma caused by my parents. I was, as I told you in the beginning, I was invisible for my father and uh, my mother was controlling and obsessive. So I was quite traumatized. And there was a toxic pain inside of me coming from the trauma of abandon, abandonment and rejection that resonated with the pain of my ex-partner. He was also mistreated by his parents when he was a child. And so we attracted each other because of the toxic pain we had inside. And I had also my mother's fear of men because she was mistreated when she was a child. And my ex-partner felt this fear and he was attracted to it. You know? um, and it's these things that give shape to this kind of 
dynamics. It's not that men are the perpetrators and women are the victims. There is a little bit of the victim. I know that for many women, this is, they don't want to hear this. But I think that it's necessary because we can, in this way, we can prevent and even end domestic violence forever. It is possible. But also we, the women, have to understand that we pass on to our children everything, not only nutrition, so that the fetus develops, but also emotional things and emotional baggage. And if in that emotional baggage there is trauma, there are toxic fears, there are insecurities, then there is hatred for, for yourself. My mother hates herself, for example. She passes that on to me. Yeah, of course, I don't attract love in my life. It's impossible. And if I attract love, I do not recognize it. And I sabotage. I, 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 because it's, it's uh, something that I do not do consciously, but there is something that makes me sabotage a loving relationship. Because why? why? Because it has to match with what I have inside. So if I have fear, I have to create, to shape, to find something that resonates the same. And so I attract fear. And if we women do our inner work before we get pregnant or during, even after, then we can reverse the course of, of history. We can change that and prevent that we and our children go through these destructive experiences or become perpetrators because my ex-partner became a perpetrator thanks to his mother. And so in a way, yeah, my studies and readings contributed to open my eyes towards these topics that are relevant to create a healthy and safe society. You, you went to university, you've got multiple degrees, you studied, uh, you know, cultural anthropology, primarily, uh, you said, is it Latin American or just Latin? Yeah, I'm specialized in Latin American studies and I have a, a, a master in literature and a, a master of art and a master of science in uh, uh, cultural anthropology. It was one year study. You're somewhat of a polyglot, I, I would imagine. You speak uh, Italian, English, Spanish, Portuguese, I think. Yes, Dutch and, uh, and French. Wow. <laughs> I love languages. Yeah, clearly. I, I can, I can barely <laughs> can speak uh, a little bit of Spanish, un poquito. <laughs> um, well, when when we're talking about the, this coaching, and and you're based in Sardinia, we were talking before we we started recording about primarily a lot of your coaching now is online, so virtual meetings, but ideally. Uh, you know, for the right client or whatever, the I, I would imagine that most people would want to travel to Sardinia to meet you. Uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful part of Italy, island country in the Mediterranean. And just to be able to work with somebody with, with such an incredible education and experience to uh, I know that not everybody could afford to travel, but uh, you know, I would imagine if somebody is interested in in connecting with you, in learning a little bit more about um, what you're all about, coaching wise, uh, would you recommend they go to your website or um, to? maybe schedule a phone call or a virtual meeting with you? Is that um, typically how you get the ball rolling? 
yes, they can visit my website and uh, they can always schedule a call with me. I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Clubhouse, YouTube, since recently, Facebook, and uh, I work online so I can uh, receive people from all over the world. And all of your uh, all of your social media accounts, all of those links are on your website. Yes, they are on my website. Yes, and I I work in areas like parenting, leadership, and uh, relationships and life. The best way to connect with you through your website, through social media, I'll have those links in the show notes, and. <clears throat> But before we go, I, I would really like to get a sense of, well, what are you most passionate about? You know, you, you've spent a lot of time um, developing your skills, uh, working with people, coaching people. Um, so Clearly, you're passionate about coaching and helping people uh, so sin to do, right? So can, can you distill that a little bit further? So just to give the, the listeners a clear picture of your passion. My biggest passions are reading and studying, but I love also exercise, I love learning languages. I love traveling. I'm not doing that at the moment, but I love traveling. And I love going to the beach, listening to music. Is there anything that uh, that we haven't talked about that you'd really like to leave with the listeners? Uh, what I can say is that uh, times are changing fast, faster than we imagine. And I'm not sure if the future will be bright, but I am sure that those who are ready can have a great future and can guarantee a great future to their children too. But yeah, we have to act now. Thank you very much, Elena. The work that you're doing, it's, it's very meaningful. I, I've talked to uh, a couple other coaches that really focus in these areas and I haven't had a conversation with a coach that's that really focuses on these areas of domestic violence and eating disorders. It's clear that when people have a passion for that, it's because they've experienced it. They've been through it. They have figured out how to get through themselves. And to be able to do that, you develop a passion for helping others. If you're able to to get through yourself. I think it's natural for somebody to say, this is how bad I've suffered for this long. I want to be able to help others to, you know, possibly minimize the amount of suffering that people around me are experiencing, but where you, where you can kind of relate to those individuals that are struggling and be able to show yeah, them. And, and I also understood that we go through a lot of suffering that is totally unnecessary because many people say, oh, you, the suffering teaches you great lessons. No, if it comes from your family's toxic emotional inheritance, doesn't teach you, if you waste time, money, energy, the things that you need to know are already inside of you. If you overcome those obstacles, and you think, you might think or believe that you have become stronger. No, it's that you uh, made the clouds fade away and your strength arise, arose, you know? That's it, but not because of the toxic hardship. You had already it inside yourself. So I, I really want to, to, to tell people this, stop celebrating uh, and, and welcoming trauma. It's not necessary to grow and evolve. On the contrary, we grow and evolve faster and easy, easier 
if we receive the love of our parents, period, that energy that foster your growth. And that's a different story. Thank you so much, Elena. You're welcome. Really enjoyed having this conversation. Thank you for listening to this episode of From Embers to Excellence. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on your favorite podcast platform and visit hollenbachleadership.com for additional content. My goal is and always will be to add value to as many people as possible. So if I can be of any assistance to you or someone you know, please connect with me via email or on one of my social media accounts linked on the homepage of my website. Remember, our failures don't define us unless we let them, and the only true measure of a leader is the success of their team.